Hey guys, it's Anne. If you are looking for homeworm farming advice, you're in the right place. Today's topic is my favorite worm, the European nightcrawlers. They're not necessarily the best at any one particular thing, but quite honestly, they do a lot more than the other worms. So that's why they are the best in my book. Now we're gonna go and look through the bin here. While I'm taking care of them, I'm gonna discuss why I think that they're the best worm. And as you can see in front of you right now, we've got a lot of things going on in this bin, not just worm farming. First of all, if you watched the last video, you saw that I made a fruit fly trap. And some people had said in the comments that it only works with a certain kind of gnat. And as you can see, there's a big, big dot in there. That's a regular old fly. They got caught up with just a little bit of water and vinegar and soap. There's probably a couple thousand flies in there. And last time when we came into this bin, there was a herd of flies. And now there's not. All right, so I just wanted to give you a follow-up on my fly trap. Super cheap, doesn't cost hardly anything at all. The second thing that you will see that's kind of weird here are these sticks that are growing here. Now we know that my worms, if you're not new, enjoy growing me plants. And when I was down here in the basement pruning my fig trees, I thought, why not give the worms a chance to uh, grow some of my cuttings. So because I was out of perlite, I thought, well, you know, it's either throw them in the garbage or let the worms give it a whirl. So as you can see right over here, there is a little green bud and over here where you probably can't see, there is another one that does have a bud. So the worms are well on their way to helping me propagate a new fig tree. All right, let me get you put down here and then we will start going through the bin, being careful not to, uh, interrupt their special assignment and talk about my favorite reasons or why these worms are my favorite. All right, hang on. Okay, well, you can see that all of the worms have come up to the top where they were covered by that uh, kind of a little makeshift lid. And I do that to preserve the moisture, etc., in here. Um, but it's always dry around the edges so the worms don't escape. So just kind of looking through here to see if there's anything that needs to be addressed. Still got some coconut coir that's in clumps. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of look through here. I've been trying to get this going again in the wedge fashion because previously there was just so many worms in here that it just was not working for me. So I took out half the worms and put them in the bin below so that they could spread out. One of the things that I uh, really appreciate about the European Nightcrawlers is their size. And because they were so crowded, they really were kind of starting to lose their size. So I just had a good, good chubby one here. All right. So, you know, this is much smaller than what I'm accustomed to seeing them. So hopefully now that there's less worms in here, they will continue to grow and get bigger. I'm not going to do a lot of digging in here because of the special project with the, uh, the seedlings over here or the cuttings. So we're just going to pile up just a little bit to make room for the feeding today. And it is getting a little bit, I have been making sure that the moisture is really high in here for the cuttings, which of course means that the worm bin is going to be a little bit more muddy. So one of the first things that I want to talk about is that European night crawlers are really good at eating both carbon, such as um, cardboard, and uh, leaves, and they're also really good at processing kitchen scraps. So, you know, whereas the African night crawlers really go to town on carbon, you know, it takes them a little bit longer to get through some of the nitrogen food than it does, say, the red, red wigglers, who are probably the best at eating kitchen scraps. They plow through that stuff just so fast, it's, it's insane. So, but these guys do a pretty good job of both. Um, and that is one of the reasons why I like them. They're kind of a good utility worm. They don't just have one specialty, they can do both. And another thing, a lot of people have commented that I dig around in my beds quite a bit and that it probably upsets the worms. The European night crawlers are uh, very, very, I don't know, even tempered worms. Let's Let's put it that way. It doesn't seem to matter how much I come in here and fuss with them. I don't ever find them crawling the walls. 
And if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I live in an area where there's quite a bit of truck traffic and quite a bit of storms that upset, you know, the blue worms and the African night crawlers. But these guys, it doesn't seem to bother them. Nothing seems to bother them. And I really appreciate not ever having to find European night crawler jerky on the floor in the basement. That's I that's <laughs> probably one of my favorite reasons, you know, why you know that they are just such good worms. Good worms. All right, let me flip you around. Let's look at the feeding area. Another good thing about the worms is the temperature range that they're useful in. Uh, whereas the blue worms and the African night crawlers really do depend on me keeping them warm in order to have them be very good at, you know, processing material. The European night crawlers, they do well no matter what the temperature is. It has got down to probably 50 something Fahrenheit. I'll put the Celsius over there. But down to 50 Fahrenheit in the basement here during really bad cold snaps. These guys keep on going. They go a little slower, but they keep on going. It doesn't kill them. So they have a really wide temperature range for which that they are useful in. Which is good in a place like Illinois in the United States where my winters get down, you know, we have wind chills in the negative 60 range. And then in the summertime, we get up to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So the basement here rarely gets above 80 and these worms are perfectly fine. All right, let's keep going. I think we're gonna get a worm ball this time. I think we had the, uh, the perfect mix of fast food and slow food that we're actually gonna get quite a worm ball today. So let's start moving in from the corner. That uh, potato peels, the unfrozen potato peels are still there. Let that be a lesson to everybody. You know, if you expect the food to be gone in two months, uh, freezing it really is your best option to make the food go faster. But if you're trying to make the food go slower, uh, root crops, unfrozen, is definitely a slow food. All right, here we go. You ready? This was what I was showing in the, uh, I'm going to move you a little. This is what I was showing in that short that I posted last week. I came down here to see how they were doing, and uh, it almost looked like tremors. You could see the, the ground, like, rolling with how many worms there were. I don't, I'm not finding the bottom of this worm ball. They must almost all of them be down here. Yeah, it's just one big worm ball. Holy cow. I can't even get under it. <sighs> oh, good worms. Look at that. Oh, wow. Wow. You hear them? That's great. Good boys. Good girls. Okay, so this is interesting. This is that boba tea, those uh, tapioca particles. I really kind of expected those to go fast. I'm surprised they're still there. There's a sticker. But yeah, so I'm really actually very surprised that that is still there. Tapioca is basically just sugar, right? Put in the comments below if you've ever fed tapioca before. I'm really super surprised that that is still there. They're very much enjoying it. <laughs> They're just all over the place. Look at that. Um, but you can see they are a little bit smaller uh, because I had so many worms in this bin. Hopefully they'll start bulking up now that half of them have been moved to a different bin. And let's see, my my last point is that, uh, or one of my last points is that they're really fast at breeding. You can see how many small worms there are here. The rate of breeding on the European Nightcrawler is almost as good as like the Euro the Red Wigglers. So they reproduce really fast. So moving on to the next point, in the event that you harvest some of these worms for um, either pets or for fishing, then they definitely replace themselves very quickly. Um, I've not noticed that, um, I don't know, the other larger worms like the African night crawlers, I have not noticed that they breed quite as fast. Now look at, I went and played with them and now they're sticking to me. All right, little hitchhikers, get off. There you go. All right, well, it looks like they have a little bit of food left here. So we don't have to do as heavy of a feeding, but I am going to get them some bedding this time because all of the bedding, oops, more worm ball. Is that still pumpkin? That was like two months ago. They must've found something they liked better than pumpkin and I didn't think that was possible. 
There's a pit of a mango. So I'm gonna just kind of pile these guys up a little bit so that I can make room for the new bedding. Now yeah, the worm ball just continues. That onion is still here, but they're getting into it. Yeah, it's starting to get a little bit squishy. Last time it almost looked like I put a, a fresh good onion in here. Let me know if you've ever noticed that. Like sometimes when you put things in the bin, they actually end up looking better than they did when you put them in the bin like a week later. I think it's a little crazy. Let me get them some bedding. So this bedding I keep and make separate just for the European night crawlers because I am trying to keep the species separate. At least in this bin, you know, in blue, all the species are together. But in this bin is just European night crawlers. And because of that, I make separate bedding just for them, the cardboard and the coconut coir and the kelp meal. Let's put the, uh, the food back here underneath. And then I'll put more bedding on top. Maybe give them just a little boost of feeding. Okay, so I had some potatoes that I was saving as seed potatoes, but they stayed outside and they got frozen. So now they're not gonna really work. And I also have a couple pieces of apple. I don't know, this apple just tasted musty. Um, had a whole bag of them. Must be just like the end of the season apple or something. Now this is a good combination of you know, the, the potatoes that are squishy, those should go pretty fast, but those apples and the uh, potatoes that are kind of intact will actually take a good long time. So by the time they get done with the boba tea, this should be ready for them to eat. Let me get them some more bedding. So if you have a different opinion over what is your favorite worm, please put that in the comments below. Uh, what is your favorite worm and why? I just think that the fact that they're useful for so many different things makes them my favorite worm but uh, everybody can have their own opinions. All right, well, if you liked the European Nightcrawler series, I have a playlist that I will put right over there. And if you've already seen that, YouTube thinks you're going to like this video over here. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.